talk about, I know how the businesses made money in the past. And what do you do today? Yeah. So now that we don't have operating entities, right? Um, individual family members have set up family offices. Some have decided to manage their wealth through outsourced CIOs. Others have um, decided to go work and be clients of multifamily offices. And some are what I call do-it-yourselfers who kind of might have a quasi or a virtual office or kind of a hybrid office where they have one or two staff members dedicated to them. But then the investment management, their estate planning, trust, and tax work is all outsourced to third parties that the one or two people inside their office oversee. So now my family is largely liquid, but I say that with the caveat that now inheritors and successors, um, myself included, are extraordinarily entrepreneurial. So, you know, I would say I have one cousin who has built a pretty massive fashion design maternity wear company that Kate Middleton and several other folks um, have picked up on and she's wildly successful. Um, I have a sister who has her own business and uh, her own art conservation business. Um, I have two businesses and we both, my husband and I both work in Tamron Partners, our consulting firm for family offices and Tamron Learning our educational technology business for inheritors, successors, trustees, and advisors. So it's interesting how once our family went from being bound by corporate stock and, um, you know, once those ties that bound us together, that closely held, those closely held securities, that now there's been sort of a renaissance and a rebirth. And there's there's a lot of family members who have ranches, um, I have a cousin, if you've ever heard of the Moon Pie, so that's one of my cousins um, who started the, the whole Moon Pie company sure. um, in Tennessee. So there's a lot of different businesses that have spun out. Some are sort of family oriented, some are not so much. So it's, it's all, all different for all different branches of the family. That's interesting. So that brings up a really interesting point just in your family alone, there's no one right way to when we have a liquidity event, you know, um, we try to, you know, share with people. It's really hard for most of America to understand what you're talking about. And and, 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 and the reason why I'm, because we're on a, such a broad platform, I want to make sure that we, that we get that. Um, I think the number today is somewhere around $17 million and $17 million and below Put you, you know, seventeen uh, above seventeen million. You're in the top quarter of one percent of America, and I, and I don't have it um, exact, um, but it's uh, data from the Census Bureau does these things on a pretty regular basis. Eighty eight percent of America has a net worth under a million dollars, and so you know when when you get above that seventeen million dollars, and you start going into the fifty and a hundred and $250 million. There's just different levels of services available because the complexity of managing all of that money becomes, becomes a job. You yeah. could be managing money and the estate and the taxes and all that stuff as a full-time job. And that's why there are family offices and why people create them because, you know, it's a lot. Um and I, you know, for one, I would consider myself to be an outsourced family office when we do that work. And we do it, we do it for family owned businesses because we're this specialty company that we help them with their strategy and their people issues and culture. And so we do the business coaching as well as estate and investments and personal financial planning. Um, it's really interesting to have seen all of the different everybody in the family doing something different. Yeah. 